Uh, sorry I'm late. This time it wasn't my fault. You're welcome to here. But I seem to be here now. Um, so, uh, so let's see, uh, we have an agenda. We may as well get started on it late. Um, uh, just wanted to, uh, a, a quick note on the, the new viewer release process and how it's going for you. Um, we currently have five release candidates in flight, which is much higher than we think a normal number will be. This is, this is a backlog working itself out. Uh, we have successfully gotten from, you know, gotten one candidate one one viewer build into candidate status and then promoted. Um, so we've actually done the whole process now at least once, uh, and we're we're in the process of rolling out all the other candidates are merging that and will be appearing with updated versions merged. Um, uh, the first one went in a couple of hours ago, and uh, more will more will appear over the next few working days. Uh, so the process is beginning to actually turn the way it's supposed to work. Um, uh, for those who I haven't already, yeah, exactly. Um, for for those who I haven't already mentioned it to, um, we are beginning the process of experimenting with making that set of machinery available to third-party viewers. Um, and we've, we've, I've done a couple of experiments now with a couple of the very small viewers, uh, and uh, it seems to be kind of working. Um, obviously, that will mean porting our uh, update query and download machinery uh, and making sure that that works in your viewer uh, if you want to take advantage of that. Um, well, <laughs> uh, if Firestorm wants to try using it, uh, we'll, uh, you'll be last, um, I'm afraid, this time, because uh, I'm going to want to make sure it works better with, it works well with, with smaller numbers of users. Uh, yeah, I, I, I admit to being slightly cowardly in that respect. Um, I so, read on the on the wiki page the qualifications and they are always vague. So what they mean really? Uh, they mean what they, they, no, they you, mean. You, they mean what they say. They mean uh, we'll we'll make a judgment call about whether or not it's it's appropriate. That's what it means. Um, they're guidelines, not not uh, this is this is not a program meant to be executed by a computer. Um, so. Uh, so basically, who you like and who you don't like. I, I didn't say that. I said whether you or not it'd be appropriate. That, you said only the judgment call is the only criteria. So that's basically it. Uh, okay, you can interpret it that way if you want to. Um, you, if that makes well, you feel better, that, go ahead. I have the experience with the Howell code because that that set of rules said one thing and the interpretation was, well, if you have V3-based code, then those other rules don't really matter anything. Well, if if at another time and place you have a specific question about, about whether or not a particular viewer is appropriate, I'd be glad to have that conversation one-on-one. -on -one. I'm not going to have that conversation here and now in, in, in an open session. It's not a good use of everybody's time, and, and I don't think it would be helpful. Um, so we're not going to do that. But um, I, I'm, I'm happy to have that conversation. I, I think it's in everybody's interest to have a robust mechanism for um, keeping people on recent versions, and uh, I will do my best to make it possible for people to take advantage of it. But um, that's, that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, it's it's not supposed to ever downgrade you. So if you think that's happened, um, 
try to give me the specifics about exactly what version you were running, exact, you know, and when, and exactly what version you got changed to, and when. Um, 3.5.22, that's the thing with it overriding another version. Yeah, so I think we, we're looking at that a little bit. So that what that appears to be, that it mostly appears to be a Windows issue. Um, and what it appears to be is that the installer is recording where it put something the last time, and then it's the next time it uses that, that data, um, which isn't really compatible with, uh, I assume it's putting it in the registry. I haven't a attempted to actually check that. Um, and and if, you're, if you're providing a custom location, it puts it that, and then it uses that. Um, and if that's what it is, we're probably not going to fix it uh, because I, I just don't want to get that deep into the mechanics of the internals of, of the installer. Um, it, it's It's more trouble than it's worth for the for the very small and very much appreciated group of people who who actually make an attempt to test lots of our viewers in parallel. Um, that's we appreciate that, but I think that the answer is going to be uh, for those people is going to be turn off automatic updates um, uh, and and don't let it or, or don't accept them when they're offered to you um, because. Because I, I don't think we can reasonably fix the, uh, that. The level of effort is would would at least be very high. Uh, yeah. Uh, so I think that's what that's probably going to be. But I, I, I'm going to look at it a little bit more before we actually close the Jira on it. Um, uh, yeah, maybe. I, I don't know. Um, one of the changes that's coming, it's in the snowstorm release candidate now, is um, that we are no longer going to be modifying the name of the settings.xml file that we look at based on the channel name. All channels, all Linden Lab viewers will use the same settings.xml. If you want to preserve the capability of using different ones for different channels, um, you'll have to look carefully at the merge change sets that come in with the next snowstorm viewer and uh, and and adjust them accordingly. Um, that's a policy policy decision that that each of you can make on your own. Um, we've decided that with the number of channels we've got these days it's it's more of a headache than it's worth and it will stop us from getting. The bug reports we get every, pretty much every time we introduce a new channel, which is, you know, I tried channel, I tried the viewer such and such, and it broke all my settings. Um, once this changes in everywhere, that will stop happening. Uh, yeah, actually, that's a that's that's another good workaround. <laughs> um, Um, I th think, in fact, arguments.txt isn't going to get used anymore once we have the new structure. Uh, I forgot. Check the release notes on the Snowstorm branch, uh, which I can get for you here in a moment. Uh, where is it? Alternate viewers. That's that one. So um, I don't I don't know how soon that will become the default viewer and therefore get merged to all the other branches and be in viewer release. Um, it's it's one of the candidates, uh, but like I said at the moment, there are five, um, and that's a lot of a lot of competition. Um, uh, yeah, one of the. One of the RCs has such is the, the the one that had really really nice stats was the one where we're 
improving um, how Google Breakbad works, upgrading to a new version, improving how, how it works and how it does uploads, and some other related improvements to how the stats are collected. And um, actually, the main reason why that one hasn't been moved to the default release is that we're not entirely sure we believe the numbers. So um, we're still fiddling with that, trying to make sure that we... Uh, yeah, uh, so I'm, I'm not really sure. So uh, actually, Kada asked me about the, in email this week, and I never answered, I, I apologize, about the disconnect rate in the, in the stats. So um, I can explain a little bit what those stats mean. So the crash rate stat is based on the last exec event value that's reported by the viewer at its net next login. And what it means is in my previous session, my previous session either ended normally or in one of these flavors of crash. Uh, and there's there's a few different flavors that are, but basically any non-zero value means some kind of crash. Um, and the so the crash rate percentage is the percentage of sessions we saw connecting that reported something other than zero in for its previous run. The um, the session disconnect rate is based on looking at server logs and determining that uh, the simulator decided that a viewer had gone away uh, and was no longer communicating at, without having gone through a normal clean logout disconnect process. Um, so it didn't it didn't go through the normal disconnect sequence with the simulator and the simulator decided that it was gone. Um, so uh, people who have a laptop and just close it without logging out or power it off uh, so, or so on would would show up as, um, as session disconnects. Um, presumably the vast majority of the time uh, um, viewer crashes would also count as session disconnects. Um, so usually, I think that unless unless the crash happens after the logout sequence has, has cor correctly com completed, um, which is, you know, which is a pretty short interval between the end of logout and, and the viewer exiting, um, there, there is a, a window there where you could have a crash that was not a disconnect, but most crashes will also be in the session disconnect number. So mostly, uh, it's a it's a it's a subset of the disconnect number. So I, I hope that answers the question. Yeah, that last part was what I was wondering if there would be overlap, because right. I thought it was that, but I noticed there were channels in which their crash number of crash sessions was a lot higher than the disconnect. And and that sort of made me question whether or not there was an overlap. And if there wasn't an overlap, that means there's a pretty bad disconnect problem. But that makes a lot more sense. So something that's got a much higher crash than disconnect probably has a logout crash issue. Or the, or the counts aren't being counted correctly. Right. True. Something like True. that. Yes. Um, So that makes a lot more sense. Uh, yes, right. Before connecting, also might uh, also might show up as a crash, but not a. Uh, in fact, the 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 crash stat happens on login, so it's not even. Yeah. So yeah. So there are windows at either end where a crash could occur that would not show up as a session disconnect. But anything that happens while any crash that happens while you're logging in is part of the session disconnect number, or should be. Pretty bad to uh, crash pre or post login. Post login's not too unlikely to happen, though. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Cleanup um, is a little dirty. Yeah, Tonya, the uh, one of the th one of the things that we're fooling with. Um, sorry, that was that was poorly phrased. One of the things that we're attempting to improve on the on the Google Breakpad branch uh, in the Google Breakpad co cohort is um, moving the 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 creation of the markers that that's all based on 
to as early the creation and interpretation to as early in the initialization sequence as we can make them work. Um, it turns out that there was lots of stuff happening before those first markers were created, and therefore anything that crashed in those really early sections were were not getting counted as crashes. Um, and the other thing that we're doing is trying to move the cleanup of those markers to as late in the exit sequence as possible. Um, and there, I think actually one of the fixes we've got in the snowstorm branch right now from Cinder was fixing the shutdown snapshot. Um, so uh, properly storing it anyway. I don't. I have no idea while it's whether it's related to any crashes. I don't think so. Um, but anyway, we are trying to move the. Um, yeah, we are trying to move the the marker file processing to as, as as far out to the edges as possible, so that we're covering as much of the of the execution as possible in those counts. Yeah, I know, I'm. So I'm not particular. I'm not familiar with that particular crash, but, um, you know, snap, snapshots are a, a, a perennial source of problems, whether they're automatic or manual. Um, yes, that uh, Adora Kitty, that we, one of the improvements we're making is that the crash dump generation um, is being moved uh, as much as possible of it is being moved to uh, another process, and it, we're all, well, the other change we're making on that branch is that instead of attempting to, um, let's not debug Tonya's problem now. Um, the uh, in, instead of attempting to upload the crash report immediately during the crash, uh, we are just trying to write it to a local file, and then it gets uploaded the next time the viewer runs. Um, the viewer notices that there's a crash dump and, and uploads it to the crash reporter. Um, what, one, one of the problems that was, I mean, the way, the way it was done before was uh, a crash is detected, we attempt to fork a new process, allocate a whole bunch of memory, record a lot of information, uh, and do a whole bunch of network connections to, to, to upload that information. And obviously, that's a fragile thing to to do while you're in the process of crashing. Um, so yeah, <laughs> so the uh, what we've attempted to do in the Google Breakpad branch is first of all, um, lots of information that used to be getting recorded only if you did a crash now gets recorded whether you're crashing or not, um, and then gets added to the like you know all your system configuration, your options, all that stuff. Um, and uh, I, I don't know if they used to be. I'm just comparing what they were, what they are in the main branch and what they are in the Google Breakpad branch. Um, the, uh, and I think before it was some hybrid. But, um, but anyway, now it's, now it's always happening on the next run. So in theory, if somebody crashes and then never runs the viewer again, we don't get the crash report. But other than that, we'll, we'll, we'll eventually get it. Um, so uh, if they if they abandon if they crash and abandon our viewer and 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 only ever run third party viewers again then then we'll miss out on that crash data but presumably at least some users will will give it one more try um, and uh, and so so we're hoping that that and and in fact our experience has has already been that um, we are getting more and better crash uploads. But the counts on that branch are not easily reconciled with the uploads. In fact, they've they've never been very easily reconciled with the uploads. So we're working through all that, and um, when that branch merges, you know there may be some some useful stuff. We are still trying to figure out some cases where um, no stack data gets recorded, and we're we're trying to figure out why not and fix it so that we get stack data on on all the crashes. Uh, so. Um, so that's that's still coming. Um, let's see other any efforts other... being made on hardware stats at all. Um, well, we've we've got the new stats system um, fully operational now. That is, there you know we we decided to switch from one to another. 
Um, the new stat system is is much faster and much more robust, but we have a a, a significant backlog of porting old reports over to the new system and deciding if we want them done differently and, and so forth. Um, the hardware stats has not yet um, gotten to, to anywhere near the head of the queue on that one. Um, I will try to remind people that we want that woken back up again. It is still planned, though. Uh, it's oh, definitely, yeah. Um, I mean, we're 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 basically going through all the reports we were generating with the old system and saying, is there a version of this that we want in the new system? Um, because the idea is to eventually completely retire and shut down the old system. Um, so it's a question of how how quickly we get to the head of the queue. Um, Uh, one of the things that I'm, yeah, one of the things that I'm doing is uh, that I've asked them to do is to give me um, for those viewers that are using our, um, that are going to be, that decide to start using our viewer version management, uh, we'll be able to give you breakdowns by, by your, your, the, the different channels and, and the, and the test cohort uh, and how they compare. So that'll be, that'll be kind of nice. It's it's basically the same report that we use internally for um, for looking I at that love, with our viewers. I would love to be able to break down um, our crash stats by operating system. Yeah, um, I would like that for ours too, um, and and that's a that's a, a high priority of of mine. Whether or not I I, I can't honestly say that I have any idea um, what it is relative to the universe of possible reports that need to be re need to be created. Because uh, I, I remember a while back we accidentally uh, used a different channel name for our Mac, I believe, as opposed to our Windows and Linux, and discovered that Mac has a much higher The uh, Windows rate. was using the different channel. Was it Windows? But yeah. We, anyway, so we could, it, it so opened Linux my eyes and Mac were that, uh, much higher. But that yeah. held true when we had the uh, platform stats from... Uh, last January, right. where right. Mac was quite high because it was the old versions of uh, OS X that were extremely bad at everything. Yeah. Um, well, in fact, on, on all the platforms, um, it is generally true that if you're running on a more recent version of the OS, you're generally going to have significantly fewer crashes than if you're running on a real old one. Uh, yeah. Just that the uh, which, Macs were having a significant higher amount of those older OSs. Yeah, yeah, uh, and that that seems to be holding true even today. Um, that is, if your system is more up to date, you will crash less. Yeah, seven sixty four bit was uh, quite impressive. Yeah, in the differences. Right. Um, so yes, I will try to get back to having that available and and giving it to you, um, but uh, I haven't got it now, and I don't have a, a schedule for it. Um, in fact, I'm unlikely to have a schedule for it. At just some point, it will it will appear, and I'll be able to say, yes, it's done. Um, but, uh, of course, you know, one, one thing to be kind of cognizant of, we're in the process of launching a whole bunch of new products, uh, as you know, Linden Lab is, and the people who are building these statistics and monitoring systems are uh, covering all of those products. So we're competing with not just the rest of Second Life, but with, with everything that Linden Lab is doing. So, um, uh, Let's see. So um, server-side appearance. So that, that's pretty much it on the release process and infrastructure. Any other issues related to that that we should touch on? OK. Let's move on to server-side appearance. And we have Nix to Yay, give us Nix. a little what there is to say about that. Hey, everyone. Um, so server-side appearance is looking pretty good. Uh, I've been uh, doing a lot of uh, number crunching. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, it's broken in a couple of uh, ways. Fortunately, nothing uh, too major. Um, so uh, keep trying. Um, but I uh, want to give you guys an update. Uh, we should not uh, be um, 
having any major changes next week, uh, but we could start to see rollout possibly as early as the uh, following week, the week of the 20th. Um, so just to give you guys a heads up, we are getting uh, closer to the point where we uh, are thinking of throwing the switch. Uh, again, as always, if uh, anyone here knows any reason why we can't throw it yet, please uh, speak up now or uh, forever live with uh, server-side baking. I'll try not to raise my hand, but I did have a question. Uh, I believe it was Willow. I was at the uh, server user group. Simon said something about um, rolling up some server-side updates for server-side appearance, but not necessarily in a rollout. Uh, yeah, we are uh, going to be rolling out some changes to the uh, back-end servers, the ones that are actually doing the baking uh, next week. Um, you shouldn't see uh, much difference, uh, but there were uh, a couple of scenarios where the viewer would have to retry requests um, when it shouldn't have to. Uh, so we're trying to get that cleaned up uh, before we uh, roll out to the whole grid. Those, those servers are a, are a dedicated service that's not running on the same hosts as its simulators. Um, so that's, that's not a simulator role. Um, it's, oh, it's a back-end service role. That... Uh, my other question was, um, what is the viewer side repo starting to look like for um, server side appearance? It's getting pretty big. Like, are you guys going to have a really big code drop of of uh, server side appearance bug fixes? Uh, yeah, I haven't uh, done a push from internal to external uh, in a while. Um, I want to wait at least until we get another merge up from uh, viewer release, uh, which I should be able to get to, uh, if not today, then sometime next week. Um, we're getting close to the point where um, we might have a pretty good set of the new inventory functionality in the viewer. Uh, again, it's not set up with uh, anywhere for you guys to test against that yet. It's uh, too early for that. Um, it's also too early for you guys to start releasing viewers with the new code yet since we haven't been through uh, the normal QA channels. Um, but I will try and uh, get the uh, external repository uh, up to date uh, sometime in the next week or so. And is that repo going to be, um, you know, pretty much just server side appearance stuff, or are you going to have that mixed in with other stuff, like the Chewy kind of thing? Uh, I mean, we will be uh, pulling from viewer release, uh, hopefully pretty regularly, so anything that gets into our trunk uh, should be in there. Um, but aside from what's in trunk, we're pretty much just focusing on sunshine um, and related things. Uh, I believe at one point we got some HTTP work from Monty in our repository, um, but that was related to the texture fetching that we have to do for uh, server-side appearance. Um, we're not really mixing projects that don't get promoted. Okay, good. Thank you. Right. The, the, this next round is mostly focused on network and inventory fixes. Um, so there's less protocol changes and uh, more just um, networking. Nix, in your email you mentioned that there will be new capabilities for uh, stuff like <clears throat> creating inventory links. And will there be a, a dedicated capability that uh, that uh, sets the state of uh, the current outfit folder? So instead of uh, manually creating deleting links, we can, the viewer can say, okay, my current outfit folder is these and these and these items in Mongo. Oh, you'll have to repeat that, I think, Lutheen. I'll wait until he says that uh, his voice yeah. is back. Uh, sorry, sorry about that. Um, 
I heard you were asking about the uh, capabilities for setting uh, the links in the current output folder. Yeah, yes, you, email, uh, you mentioned that uh, there will be new capabilities for uh, creating and deleting inventory links, the, the operations that are currently only in UDP. And I was wondering if there will be capability to set the whole state of the current outfit folder in one go. So the viewer could say, okay, my inventory, my current outfit contains these and these items in, in, in one post. Uh, yep, that's uh, that's the goal that we're uh, working on. That's uh, one of the things that should be uh, pushed out soon, hopefully. Uh, it will require um, an update to agent inventory services on the uh, regions, and I don't believe we have that pushed out um, on Aditi yet. Um, so even uh, once I get you guys the server, uh, the viewer code, uh, you won't necessarily be able to test it. Um, but uh, when I manage to do that code push, I'll uh, try and send you guys a note uh, so you can uh, see where we do that. So the whole of, uh, of uh, setting new outfits will be done over capabilities now. We don't have to resort to, to the old messaging anymore, right? Uh, the goal is to avoid relying on any UDP messages um, in order to set your appearance properly. Um, I believe that we are uh, hitting most of that goal. Uh, I'll have to uh, check with the engineers working on that to make sure that we have hit every single operation. Um, but yeah, that, that is absolutely what we're trying to work towards. Okay, that will fix many, many problems. That's the hope, yes. And that's that's the whole purpose between the second uh, for the second release is to try and fix the next point of failure, uh, which is uh, most commonly at the inventory level, um, from what we've seen. Are there any other questions about server-side appearance or the process going forward? Oh, that was all from me. Oh, uh, local from Worlds. Um, the I think the only update on that, uh, Worley, is the last comment in the issue from from Monty, which is it 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 looks as though the bad status that was causing his fetches of texture of appearance textures to fail was probably coming from some proxy outside of Linden Lab. It's not uncommon to have a a proxy you can't otherwise see on a corporate network, and he does did say he was on a corporate network. And having range requests fail through proxies is uh, unfortunately also not unusual. Yeah, it's it's possible that one was on one VPN, one was on another. I mean, who knows? Um, very difficult to say without having uh, really snoopy access to his his system. Um, okay, so uh, let's move on. Um, interest list. Uh, it has not appeared as a project viewer, but um, <laughs> as has been true for the last uh, few meetings of ours, uh, I keep hearing from the team, we're really close to getting through QA and being ready to put uh, put a, an interest list viewer out, and then I get to the meeting and they haven't done it. So um, I'm not sure what the story of that is, but it it should appear in a... In a uh, Either a project viewer or a or a release candidate, sometime soon. Um, yeah, right. They're they're hammering away at bugs. Um, so, but you'll 
you'll get to see the changes as soon as we do. Basically, um, I haven't I haven't had much visibility on on the internals of what they're doing. Um, let's see. Uh, and uh, similarly, Baker tells me that he's making good progress on the group band stuff, but um, doesn't have code yet for public consumption. Um, is, is Baker going to come out soon so that we can bug him? <laughs> uh, I suspect that he'll show up when he, when he has something really good to say. Um, if I was him, that's what I'd do. Um, and, uh, on Worley's question on the, on the agenda list, um, do we have stats for the percentage of sessions that have ALM enabled? Um, I, since our last meeting, I have learned how to gather them. Um, I haven't got updated ones, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to do that. Uh, I need, I, I need to log in on a system I haven't got yet. Um, so I'm, I'm working on that, but I'm going to try and put together something that that gets me those numbers um, real soon now so our um, our tip right now uh, we've not pushed out to our beta testers yet but um, uh, most of our internal team being you know support developers have found a pretty significant uh, performance hit enabling ALM and uh, we're running current um, materials code so the concern is, um, you know, if we enable that by default, as you guys have done for, you know, a large majority more users, um, the perception will be that, uh, you know, that release sucks for them because their performance is really bad. Uh, it would be really worthwhile if we could get that reproed on the on the materials project viewer, which I believe there's an update to either out or in the process of coming out, um, even as we speak. Uh, so a, a very sub substantial set of fixes. Uh, I mean, the team has been has been working on a lot of fixes for for that, and um, I don't know how many of them are performance related, but. Um, Obviously, getting getting it reproed on the on the materials project viewer would be by far the most useful thing to do. I'm looking forward to seeing that code. Yeah, um, the other thing about ALM, basically, that to to. Uh, you know, if you're if you're giving users advice, ALM is kind of a broad brush, right? So, if you if you turn that on, there are still things you can do, like setting reflections to the minimal setting, setting um, uh, the number of lights to a, a smaller number, um, and uh, and that sort of thing that make a pretty substantial difference, but still let you see. Um, materials textures and and uh, and all that so um, you know this is a little bit of a case of having a lot of options is you know is is hard to explain to people um, uh, I thought it was but maybe I'm wrong I think it's buried pretty deeply um, Okay. Um, well, I think what Latif is saying is sort of kind of what I'm trying to say, too, is that, um, and granted, it's not finished yet. It's still a work in progress. But we do have a lot of users who say, well, Linen Lab has released it, so how come you don't have it? And um, my my response is generally the same. It's, it's still in development, and um, for the most part, we're sort of waiting for it to be polished up before we release it. All right. And, and that's legit, but um, 
you, you know, I th I think you all understand, but I but I have to say it anyway that telling me about problems you've found with it in your ports of it doesn't actually contribute anything at all. I I can't it's, use that information at all. It's so not if you a can't, problem in a port. Or it's a I problem didn't say it was a problem in a port. I said you need to give us information about how to reproduce and demonstrate the problem on our build because that's the only one we can do anything with, right? Um, telling me that there's a problem that you found on your, uh, you know, in your viewer, no matter how strong the evidence is that it also exists in our viewer, um, doesn't help me. Only showing me how to reproduce the problem and measure the problem in our view, reasonably current version of our viewer helps me to get it fixed. And and then, you know, that's something I can really use. I, I also completely agree with this uh, from another perspective as well. I mean, how are you going to know that the problem also wasn't uh, something that, for example, we did in our own viewer rather than something that came from Linton Lab? So I completely agree with you there, Oz. It's, 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 it's not an easy problem, and we've got a lot of we've got a lot of branches and a lot of forks. You know, we've got a lot even nowadays, even within Linden Lab, and and of course, counting counting all the variants out there in the universe. Uh, you know, the the uh, incidentally, the you know, I told you those numbers before. Um, the the uh, existence of the server side appearance on the RCs does not yet appear to have had a substantial impact on the number of viewer versions that people are running out there in the world. Um, so um, my theory that people will keep running things even after they can't see each other's avatars uh, is, is still holding up, but we'll see um, after it's gone to the whole grid. Um, uh, you, you, I... That's I really still good don't believe, question. incidentally, I still don't believe that just changing the channel with the command line option doesn't work. I, I need somebody to prove that to me because that's how we tested the updater. So it does work. At least on our viewer, it does. Uh, maybe somebody else's viewer doesn't doesn't do the channel changing in the same way. Um, the world's, okay. world's wouldn't say it if it wasn't yours. Uh, I, I, uh, you know, I, I, I have... The utmost confidence in Whirly's bug reports, but um, I want to see that one. I want to see a set of repro steps with specific version numbers in it, um, and then I'll I'll give it to you know Alexa will be all over that. Uh, thank you. That would be good, but I'm really baffled by how that could be true. Uh, so, so we'll see. Um, and and I'll I'll jump on the logs on that one because we really need this to work right. So, uh, and that's everything we had on the agenda. So we can. <laughs> well, Alexa is famously patient. Uh, so, uh, what can I tell you? Uh, so, other random topics. Um, just uh, since Monty's here, how has Monty been making progress with HTTP? Okay. I'm, I'm kind of voice impaired at the moment. So oh, dear. I've um, been doing performance testing, Windows, Mac, etc., on uh, MeshCode. And uh, that, that's currently ongoing, but should finish up very shortly. Uh, generally looks good. The goal of this one isn't so much a performance increase, but much better connection behavior. Generally, I'm getting the same mesh throughput with one quarter the number of connections. That's uh, so my goal. So it's look, going to show up in a, well, I hope it's going to show up in a project viewer rather shortly. It'll uncommittedly sometime this month, though um, I'm getting stuck behind a lot of other releases, so that may be a little off a bit. So that will be the first release, again, given into other people's hands. 
and it does include some server changes, which will be coming out. Uh, actually, they're ready. They just need to be queued. They didn't. That I think we're going to take a look at pipeline. So, to the moment. Thank you, Monty. I guess I could be a smart ass and say, where's, ba where's Baker? Uh, and I couldn't answer that if I, if you did. We're, uh, we're really hoping, we're really trying to, we're praying that timing works out because we're, we're working on our Chewy merge. And I'm hoping that by the time we get these Chewy bugs worked out, um, you guys will have uh, you know, the interest list changes, the server-side appearance, uh, code drop, um, you know, HTTP, all this other stuff that we can merge that in, and it would be great to be able to release and be caught up. So we're sort of hoping timing works, and that's why I've got all these questions about timing and code and projects you guys are working on. Yes. And materials uh, too. Yeah, that's another right. thing. Well, the materials, the materials stuff, you can you can see what's happening. That that's all happening in the in the same repository it's been in for the last couple of months. Um, that, like I said, that's going out to a project viewer. There, there's a new project viewer coming out there as soon as it can get out of QA. Um, but it's it's. It may have actually already happened while we're here. I don't know. Uh, so, uh, and they, the the team tells me they feel very good about that version. So, we'll see. How often will the promotion meetings take place? And when you, which RC is going to be next out? Uh, probably. Uh, I, uh, barring very unusual circumstances, it won't be any more often than once a week. Um, what, that will promote a release candidate to the default viewer because we don't really want to give people a, a new default viewer once a week. Um, we may, I, I hope that in fact it will be once a week um, for the next few weeks so that we can get the number we've got in flight down to something a little bit more reasonable. Five is a high number and we've got other people that, that might show up with another one any minute now. Um, so, uh, you know, we don't really want to put out a viewer a week if, if we can help it. Um, but, uh, but we may have to for a little while. We may have to do it a little more frequently than we'd like for a little while just to, to get the backlog cleaned out. Um, well, that'll be good because we get a lot of people complain that our releases are so sparse and far between. We can just say if you want more frequent releases, go switch to Linen Lab. <laughs> uh, Kitty has, uh, Adora has a really good question there in, in text. Um, yeah, I was just reading it. Uh, are there plans to accept the, to extend, make sure I understand it. Uh, extend the AO scripting functions that Kelly put into a viewer side AO project that can interface with that server side functionality. Uh, okay, well, scripting is never viewer side. So I don't think I understand the question. Well, what she's saying is there was some talk some time back, I don't remember who it was, I think it was actually Simon or Andrew, um, about. Uh, Firestorm has a built-in AO, and I think some of the other third-party viewers have picked that up. And there was some talk about uh, from a Linden, I believe, uh, who showed some interest in um, creating your own version of a, a built-in AO built into the viewer. Um, so I think her question is, there were some uh, scripting changes for AOs added. Was there any intention or any secret project happening for viewer side AO? Um, I think, so, so let me see if I am correctly restating the question. 
Um, yeah, if it was a secret project, I couldn't tell <laughs> you. But um, uh, so, what if I recall correctly? And and yes, there have been a lot of discussions about how to fix up animations. Um, the um, if I recall correctly, and uh, and um, the point of this recent scripting changes was to make it possible to sort of replace pieces of your animation stuff in in a better way, and therefore make make the behavior of of animations work more smoothly. Um, the discussions we've had internally about what should be possible from the viewer are have mostly been uh, uh, around that we don't want to have to to do a round trip out to the viewer to find out what the next day oh if you know what the, what the next animation for a particular circumstance ought to be that is to the ex to the extent that we want to change things we want to give you the ability to pre-program what should happen with animations as much as possible so that it all happens server side and that's what those new scripting things were those new scripting things were at least a step in the direction of being able to do that um, uh, right so the um, and yeah a, a wearable it was 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 one element of that discussion um, so the question so let me restate what I think a good version of that question is, is whether or not there will be a direct viewer API to those same animation capabilities that are currently only available through scripts. Is that a reasonable restating of the question, Adora? Yeah, okay. So um that's something I, I don't I don't know of any of any plans to do that. Um it's something that uh you know we may be able to 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 set up a project to do. I'll have to touch base with Kelly and find out you know what's involved and, and where we stand. Um it is something we'd like to we'd like to fix up is is making AOs work better. Um, that doesn't necessarily that we want to make that that doesn't necessarily mean that we want to make all existing AO systems work better. It means that we want there to be a better way to build AO systems. If, if you're if you're understanding my difference. Okay, so. Um, I will uh, I will make a note to myself to try to have a conversation with Kelly and the other people who would need to be involved um, about that and see what the what the scoop is um, before our next meeting. Um, in fact, why don't I why don't I put uh, I'll make the note on the agenda for next time so that I remember it. <laughs> yeah, there are there are a bunch of problems with the existing systems, you know, including how they're affected by lag and how they're affect how they how they affect lag. Um, <laughs> uh, yes. Um, one could one could argue that <laughs> Second Life is a is, is a collection of kludges, uh, but it's but it's a it's a pretty functional one. Um, I I just actually thought of a question for you. Has there been any uh, talk internally about working uh, either separately by Linden Lab or with third party viewers towards uh, doing something about the cache code? Uh, 
um, doing something with it. Can you? You mean to, to, Im to improve the cash, the viewer cash? The, the way the viewer handles cash. Yeah, there was there, there was a discussion uh, object here. Object cash, text for cash. Yeah, th th there was a discussion here at one of the third party meetings about it, and uh, s somebody I can't remember if it was Monty or Nix or you yourself that said that might be a good thing for a collaborative right. effort. Right. Right. Yeah, I did. I did say something along that line. Um, the uh, and, and I've had that conversation I internally, and the and the uh, the the frequent reaction I get is uh, that people, you know, I say, "Gee, we should do something about people cash." People turn around people, and walk away and um, ignore you. <laughs> co cover their ears and run in in uh, yeah. you know in random directions uh, for, away from me. Um, that that doesn't necessarily mean that it, it shouldn't happen or that it won't happen, um, but. Uh, I, I do, I do have to, I do have to say that, uh, you know, there's, uh, there's a, a, a maze of twisty code, all different, um, involved. It's, it's, so it's, it's in, in the, the same menu. realm as rewriting the way avatar appearances work, basically. Well, let's just say that, uh, you know, it might be as difficult to merge as Chewy was by the time we were done. Oh boy. Um, prepare the bribes. <laughs> So um, that's actually something that I feel kind of personally, uh, if I was setting development priorities for things that 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 ought to be done under the covers, uh, that would be pretty high on my list. Um, but I'm not setting those priorities, so um, we'll see. Um, now, why would that be something that you would do uh, privately and not involve third parties with? I didn't say it was. Um, but, well, uh, why? Why would? Why would the? But it is certainly something that we would be to do that. Uh, uh, no, I didn't. I didn't mean it that way at all. I, I, if I conveyed that impression, I, I, I'm. Uh, but it is the sort of thing that I don't think could be done entirely by outside developers. Um, oh, it absolutely would, it not. Would require you, heavy you guys involvement have from some internal server staff. side. Yeah. Well, not only server side. I mean, even just fixing the viewer side. Um, I mean, if anybody, if any of you want to take on, let's fix all the caches in the Linden Code Tree. Well, a lot um, of us are sort of in the dark sign me cache up. as well, right? Uh, we've had a couple of devs look at it very closely and and still not be able to agree with each other on how it actually works. Uh, yeah. Um, and and and, it, and there isn't just one, right? There are a whole bunch of them. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I mean, I have a I have a notion about how I would want to um, change the the general code structure, and it would involve ripping the guts out of a whole bunch of stuff and touching an awful lot of code. Um, and you know, I could be completely wrong about it, the right way to go about it. <laughs> 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 right, exactly. Um, uh, unfortunately, it is not true that the that the cache, the caches, the many different caches we have, are all coupled to the functional code they allegedly serve in similar ways. Um, and it is not true that they are cleanly separated from that code. So. Um, If we still have users who um, can't fetch inventory. Not just on our viewer either, apparently. Yeah. Um, so, uh, if if someone wants to, you know, someone or some set of people wants to try to take that on, um, I will cheerfully sponsor that project. I really will. Um, for one or more of the of the caches, um, it is it is a subject that comes up quite a lot internally. Um, but it's you know it's, it's a scary subject. Well, it's a scary subject, and it's also very difficult to to for an honest engineer 
to <laughs> oh Monty, that wasn't nice. Um, <laughs> the the, the uh, <laughs> um, it, it's a it's a very difficult thing for an honest engineer to look at and say to a product manager, yes, if you give me eight weeks, I promise you the following quantifiable improvements, right? Um, and so, prior, and so, when faced with with uh, something that takes a, a substantial time commitment on the part of highly skilled engineers, uh, involves a significant risk because it touches lots of code, and doesn't have a really predictable, quantifiable, measurable benefit. Um, product managers tend to look at that in comparison with almost anything else and choose the something else, right? Um, that's that's a natural that's a natural and and from their perspective personal perfectly understandable thing. Um, that doesn't mean that the benefits might not be great, um, and that the risk might not be manageable. But it's really difficult for for a good and honest engineer to say yes, I'm sure that the following benefits will accrue, and that yes, I'm sure it can be done in a reasonable amount of time and. And, and, and so on. It's just hard. I remember being here a little over a year ago, I think it was, that we were talking about, uh, that you were talking about fixing avatar appearance. And here we are. Yes, which goes to show you that, that product managers sometimes make the right choice despite uncertainty. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and, and you can you can you can credit uh, the the other Lindens who are here, frankly, with um, having sold a lot of those changes to to management uh, and getting them done. So what you guys rock. Avatar, Avatar appearance. appearance. Oh, okay. That was I mean changes. that was a huge mumble jumble. I zoned out for like HGTV a minute. Book. I missed uh, some context. Yeah, but but you know. Uh, you were hearing that here a year ago. Um, some of us were having that conversation internally three years ago. So, so. it takes a little time to make these things happen. Well, <laughs> You'll just have to... to uh, all I have to say about it is you all have... Anybody involved in the SSA implementation has my undying gratitude. You'll have to ignore uh, caching for a while, let it crop up a lot of bugs and crashes, and then you'll get that uh, authorization to work on it you need. <laughs> yes, I, w I once had a, a, a project I worked on where, where the members of the project team spent more than a few hours trying to brainstorm how we could put in a bug that would only show up in the beta site that was in Oahu, but um, we never did figure it out. <laughs> uh, so. Uh, that this sort of thing is very common in uh, <laughs> in IT, where you can't get a budget to fix something, so you simply ignore it or intentionally allow it to fault in order to get the budget in order to either upgrade or fix harder to get right, right. permission well, to do a, things. That's a perilous balancing act um, yeah. that I'm not going to claim we're trying to actually do on purpose. But no, we never do it on purpose. <laughs> um, wink, wink, nod, nod. I mean, I've totally never done that. <laughs> okay, I think we've, we've actually chat. wandered out of actual topics and into random speculation. Have we got any actual topics left? Uh, uh, just one not, quick one. Can, uh, can... Probably a sore spot a little bit. Um, and Tanya just reminded me of it, is the uh, deformer. Any news? No news. Um, Fair enough. I, I would like there to be news, but there isn't yet. Uh-oh. 
I'm wearing liquid mesh. Whatever that means. Liquid mesh is um, what my pants are made of, and I don't know what that is. <laughs> Yeah, um, that is that remains uh, a unsupported um, future. So my bug. jeans may explode at any time. And when they do, we won't consider it a bug. <laughs> uh, uh, well, you have a very popular creator that's doing this. I don't know if any, any, who else is doing it, but uh, Redgrave is doing this right now. Uh, every time it has come up at my at my content creation user group, I have been very explicit to say this is not a supported feature. Use at your own risk. I do not advise people create a business around this feature. Um, if I, I believe that message has been passed on, if creators choose to ignore that, um, that is a risk they take. Uh, I I have to I have to agree with Latif. Because the problem is, is it's going to snowball. Despite you guys saying forever till you're green in the face that it's not supported, um, is that the content is going to snowball. It's going to be all over the grid. And by the time it does get broken, um, it's not the content creators that are going to be raging at you. It's like tens of hundreds of thousands of users. It would be better PR for you to break it now than... And how Wait the content creators know break. that this is not supported? They, they have no way of knowing that Someone it's tells not supported. Them. Yeah, but they read on a web page, hey, this is a way you can upload a mesh that deforms without a deformer. And they read on a wiki page or somewhere how to do it, and they do it. And they have no Anybody, idea yeah. that, that they, this might break in, 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 in two months. It's on a wiki page? Yeah, but... Right now? Uh, we just added to the wiki page. The only way to fix this is actually to fix the uploader to prevent it. You cannot depend on people finding some obscure wiki page. Well, I think that the people who are doing it in the first place have been told pretty unambiguously that it's I it's think not. you're wrong on that. No. I know many people who create uh, those things and we are completely unaware that it's, it might break in the future. Well, if you know lots of people that, uh, that don't know that, it would be a service to them and to everybody else if you would tell them. I think you guys should, should kill it in a patch of some kind. Well, that's, a, that's an interesting discussion to have, and I'll... Well, I mean, I, 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 we'll, I spent we'll good money that. on these pants, but it's it's a snowball effect, and <laughs> no, don't quote me on that. Um, <laughs> it is a snowball effect, and you guys have had this problem before. Look at uh, when the, uh, the bridge, for Phoenix Bridge, we were using a, a tortured prim for the bridge, and um, it's getting used for something uh, unethical, I believe, and... Uh, Simon or Andrew were going to kill it server-side, and I had to make the argument, if you kill it server-side, you're going to have 300,000 people wearing spheres, prim, prim spheres around their waists. And, and I pleaded with him, and, and to his credit, he was really good and, and put that on the table. We issued releases and updates to the bridge that we're not using. Um, torture prims, but it's the same example. It goes the same way. If, if it was you wait too long and make that change, yeah. If you guys wait and change it or break it down the road, when a lot of people um, are wearing and have purchased and spent real money on well, this was a little uh, different. Type of mesh. It was it, well, it was torture to be invisible and an unselectable, which is not good. I mean, that was the way Emerald had it, and it was just dumb. Um, no, it was and just all bad, they did yeah. was simply delay it for a fix to be made. Yeah, to not be using it. But the it. point is still the same: is you know, once you get so many people that are on something or they're they're using something or spent money, then your beef is no longer with the content creators; it's with the users, with your customers. They won't understand when you tell them that you told the content creators it wasn't supported. 
They'll just want their money back. And yeah. really, how, how hard is it to make a list of uh, all our joint names in uh, that district during the upload? That's a good question. It, it should be rather trivial patch to add, really. Fair, fair question. I will, I will ask that pointed question of uh, a bunch of people and see what happens. Yes. Um, I was just saying, you either support it or you prevent it, and to prevent it, it's easy, and and you might also decide to support it. You know, in either case, you know, this situation that we have now is the worst of all. Yeah, I don't actually disagree with that. Oh, if we could support it, that would be even better. But I don't think that's on the table, is it? Well, actually, why isn't it? Why isn't it supported? How come? Like, is there? Logic be behind why you guys are objecting to this method? You guys being Linen Lab? Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't think we want to get into that right now. That's not really. I mean, yes, there is, but I don't want to get into it. Um. Okay, um, I'll I'll try to have an update on that for next time too. I'm gonna miss my jeans. <laughs> I just bought them too. <laughs> well, you certainly knew better. Well, actually, um, I didn't. I I, did, I had no idea, and you know, I should have known better. But I actually <laughs> had no idea what liquid mesh actually meant. I just know that they look great. Uh, yeah, well, marketing buzzwords are like that. Um, Yeah. Okay. Point point taken. I I hear I hear the uh, the perspective, and I I accept the additional am ammunition for my discussions about the deformer. Nobody quote me, please. In, in other <laughs> words, stop hitting you with the hammer, us. <laughs> now they pay me to be hit with the hammer. It's fine. Okay, that's it for me. Okay. Well, I think we're I think we're done for the day. Thank you all for coming. Um and uh I will see you again in two weeks. Have a good weekend everyone. Bring Baker with you. <laughs> I will make a point to invite him. Uh, thanks, Oz. <laughs>